I'm outside James J. Fox, often known as J.J. Fox, a high-class cigar merchant in St. James's Street, London, where patriarchs have been coming for their cigars since 1787, 231 years ago. It's a place of historical importance, not only because it's the oldest cigar merchant in the world. The first recorded meet meeting of the Patriarchy Council was held here in 1788, just a year after the store opened, and monthly meetings have been held here ever since. But please keep that to yourself. Heaven knows what would happen if feminists were to, were to learn that we meet here on the first Tuesday of every month at 7 p.m. Okay, let's go in and buy Paul Elam's Patriarch cigars to go with his Churchill Award. Okay, I'm here in the Churchill room of JJ Fox, um, and we're in the. Uh, and this is just packed full of memorabilia about Churchill. He lived in Cuba for a number of years before the Second World War, and he used to come. In, into this in, into the shop for his cigars and to sample any new stock and this is Churchill's chair so this is the chair that Churchill would, would sit in whenever he was sampling the cigars hopefully it won't break well if you could take if you could take Winston Churchill's weight it should take mine Tom I think so very comfortable now this is something that you'll never find in Paulie Lamb's home country of the United States um, a room with a humidifier full of, full of uh, Havana cigars. Just wonderful. I'd like two pictures of cigars, please, and one short picture of cigars. Yes, of course. Um, so two more pictures of cigars, and then Romeo and Juliet, Churchill's, and Churchill's. I'd like to show you that one. And Catherine. It's Philip from Fox in London. Good morning to you. Uh, thank you. Well, would you like to Very well, thank you. Well, I'm, he I'm here in the sampling room of James J. Fox, and it's permitted to smoke cigars or, uh, or pipes uh, anywhere throughout the establishment. Now, Tom, you were telling me that there's a question you wanted to ask. Yes, it's been rumoured on the internet that uh, Paul Eaglin has something that's seven inches long while you only have something that's five inches long. Is this true? I can confirm it's true, Tom. Yes, it's true. I smoke short Churchills, five inches long, while Paul smokes the seven-inch Churchill. So, yeah, his is seven inches long and mine is five inches long. So here we are in the middle of uh, Harry's Bar. Um, so called, it's actually, its proper name is the Parcel Yard at the end of uh, King's Cross Concourse in London. So called because quite a number of MRAs met with Angry Harry uh, some months before the 2016 conference. And sadly he died um, just a month or two before the conference. Um, and one, one thing that makes it a particularly good MRA uh, pub is that it has a glass ceiling. Uh, what? Yeah. You told me that was a delusion. No, well, um, it's a delusion for feminists, but, but you know, as a woman, you're obviously not allowed to go through the uh, glass ceiling, and if, if you even try, Tom and I, as patriarchs, are on a bound to stop you. So between us, I think we can probably manage it. So we're here in Parliament Square, in front of the statue of a very courageous man, Winston Churchill to commemorate Paul Elam, another very courageous man. And as well as, um, as well as his cigars and a biography of Winston Churchill by Boris Johnson, our foreign secretary, um, signed, dedicated uh, copy, thanks to Philip Davis. Um, he's also gonna be getting a Churchill Award sent to him before the conference. And this is it. And I'd just like to read it out for you. Justice for men and boys and the women who love them is pleased to present a Churchill Award to Paul Elam, an American, possibly the best-known men's rights activist, MRA, in the world. A former mental health professional, he launched a Voice for Men, AVFM, in 2009, and an Ear for Men, AEFM, in 2015. He hosted the first international conference on men's issues in Detroit in 2014. His influence on the modern men's rights movement, MRM, is incalculable. His courage in challenging feminist ideology and advocating for the human rights of men and boys make him a worthy winner of this award. Paul, thank you for everything you've done.